I, I run a company called Timmet. We, uh, we're a family business. We go back 60 years, I think. And uh, we're, we're the largest hardwood importer in the UK. Uh, not, not actually a huge industry um, and a very fragmented industry, but an industry that uh, sources timber from around the globe. Um, I became involved about, uh, well, 93 I joined the company and at the time there was a great deal of controversy about uh, Brazilian mahogany and we were being accused of uh, murdering indigenous, indigenous populations in the Amazon. So I was sent on a two-week mission to prove that this wasn't the case and um, in truth I came back firmly convinced that it was the case which rather put me at odds with the company I was working for, family business, and um, most of an industry, not the whole industry. Uh, so the next 10 to 12 years I, I spent pr prior to meeting Nigel, <laughs> working inspired actually by the work Alan did in B&Q on supply chain auditing, and I actually recruited some of the people that worked for Alan to help me do it, not not uh, I didn't poach them. <laughs> they were looking for work at the time, and <clears throat> the more I travelled, the more I realised that if you held a mirror to my company, you could uh, you could look at a uh, a degraded and devastated landscape uh, just about in any forested corner of the world. And I don't think, in all honesty, that that was down to uh, my company or my industry. Certainly not. Uh, in any huge way, there are massive and complex causes of deforestation which go way beyond the timber industry, but it would be uh, gross denial to suggest that the timber industry was had clean hands. Patently, it, it didn't. But I still find, even to this day, that if, uh, if our corporate social responsibility is just about um, supply chain auditing, then we're never going to we're never going to improve the world of forestry because frankly it's a near impossible task. Uh, I won't go into why it's so complicated but it is massively complicated trying to uh, source where a particular tree has come from in uh, the Congo or even in Europe. What we did start thinking about though was hey we could we could make a much bigger contribution if we used our business skills to think about planting some trees instead of uh, always buying logs, effectively. And, uh, and the thinking started because, um, in their wisdom, uh, the, the third generation up of my company had bought a lot of farmland around the yard, uh, in fact, to make a buffer zone so people wouldn't intrude onto the industrial activities of the yard. But these fields, uh, one in particular, seemed like an ideal place to put a community woodland. And uh, my colleague, Mike Packer, and I had this idea, wouldn't it be a great thing to do, especially as there was, adjoining that, there was some old woodland, not ancient, old. Um, the truth is we didn't really know how to do it. We had the idea and we were trying to run a business and we didn't really know how to do it and that's enter Nigel. <laughs> ah, the tree man. <laughs> because Nigel came along and said effectively I, I know how to do it and, and uh, we came here, we visited a couple of years ago and from then on it's been, I have to say, relatively easy. We've, we've just followed the instruction book that effectively Greenlight have given us and uh, we've created a similar kind of structure to the one that Dave's talking about. We've got our core of 20 people at work who are very into the community woodland. We brought local schools in. Um, we, uh, we're now getting a, an interfaith group doing a planting day, an Oxford interfaith group doing a planting day next winter. And we're lucky enough that this field is 17 acres. 
So there's enough planting to last us for years and years. <laughs> uh, so far we've managed, I, th I think, the best part of a thousand trees. We can't count them because they're, they're covered in weeds now and we've got to get out this Sunday and start weeding. But it's a very exciting project. And I think what Nigel was also referring to in my little introduction there is that's inspired us to go on. So last week, Nigel and I were actually in Ghana where uh, we've, we're, we are well progressed in a project that some of you I know saw on the news last week on the BBC to plant uh, 24 million trees over the next four years. And uh, that's over 20,000 hectares. And that's a project which, uh, again, I don't think that we could pull off uh, without help from Nigel and Greenlight, and we're working at the moment on how we're going to pull the two together. Even though it's a massive project, the principles were absolutely Im embodied in Nigel's opening on PNG, because it's the same issues. It's about people and the forest they live in and the difficult conflicts there are where the ownership of the trees is being claimed by people who, or should I say the ownership of the land is being claimed by people who have little or no connection to the trees and the people. So there's a great deal more for us to learn, and it's a journey that I think we're going to continue together. And uh, thank you for inviting me. <laughs>